Hi everyone, my name is Ty Manuel. I'm the Oscar product manager. I'm going to give you an overview of Oscar for the Law School Administrator interface. First, just want to quickly go over the landing page of Oscar. Logo, top navigation, this is where you would log in and log out. Critical news information will be posted here. We have some other additional information on the lower section, including information about the federal judiciary as an employer, which may be useful, especially for some 1L students. The Explore Your Legal Career section, which gives the differences between a clerkship position and a staff attorney position, both of which you can apply for in OSCAR. OSCAR Training is a new dedicated training page that I will show later for all of our non-judiciary users. And then the Law Clerk Hiring Best Practices is information that were shared for judges to add to position postings and to their profile to just give a better idea of what their chambers is like and what it's like to clerk for them. The latest Oscar news, including latest position postings and the featured videos are here. Okay, now we are on the Law School Administrator landing page. A couple of things first to point out, again, here's the logo. This is a search bar that will allow you to search across various different types of information in the system, such as applicants, judges, and other information. So for example, if I type in the name Smith, I get applicants with the last name of Smith. I get a recommender here with the last name of Smith. I also get judges with the last name of Smith or with information that has Smith in the title accordingly here for Mark Ford and then no staff attorney offices. But this allows you to see what you can search through one box with one term you can see applicant information, recommender information, judge and staff attorney information all right here. The bell here, this is your notification icon. This provides you with notifications if there are system information that needs to be shared with you. you can click on the icon, see if you have any notifications. If not, you'll see this display. You can click on the gear see your notification options. So you can choose to get your alternate graduation date requests through the dashboard, which this is the dashboard here, or via email or both. Be notified of draft applications with missing documents and pending recommendation requests. You can select both, one or the other, or neither if you do not want to be notified. The email section here, if you do choose to have an email update from this notification, it will follow the same settings that you have previously as far as daily, weekly, never, um, as far as the frequency of your emails. This is the drop down with your name. This is where you access the law school profile, your account to change your password, other law school admin accounts, all of your reports, and the preferences, which are again these notification preferences, and this is where you would log out. So back on the landing page, this is where you would see your alternate graduation date requests here, your name, your law school, if you need to request one-on-one -on -one training, the statistics, how many applicants you have, how many clerkship applications are active, etc. here. This section here provides you with 10 pending recommendation requests for applicants based on how soon the position closes. So for example, this applicant here actually has 352 pending recommendations for finalized applications, but one of them, at least, is for a position that closes within the next seven days. So this is letting you know that this time is getting kind of close, and you may want to follow up with the recommendations, find out a way to get the recommendations for this applicant here, so the application is complete before the close date. And there you click through, and you'll see all of the pending recommendations. Here again, latest news. And if we had any upcoming events, they would display there. Let's take a look at the applicants list. Here again, here are all of your applicants. You also have a tab for your AGD students, your alternate graduation date students, 
and any archived applicants. Here is your more focused search box where you can search on a number of keywords for your applicants, such as last name, first name. Here you have some filters to see if they yes or no for applications. Are they an LLM applicant? What's the date of their JD LLB? So we choose 2016. One thing I want to point out is that you can add filters to really refine the list as you go. You can also go to more filters here. You can look for application finalized statuses and whether or not they have pending recommendations. You can apply this search. You can also save this as a default, which means that each time you come to your applicants list, if you log out, log back in, when you come to your applicants list, let's say you choose finalized applications that have pending recommendation requests. That is what will show every time when you log in in the future. So you can click Save as Defaults. And then here you again have your filtered list of students that meet all of these criteria. But we had added a couple of these earlier. So let's say we just want to see pending recommendations for applicants that have finalized applications. So we'll get rid of this JDLLB filter and we'll get rid of this. So here we have a much broader list of applicants. But again, that shows you how you can add and subtract filters and really change this list as you see fit and as you need to. So it's really convenient to do that. And you can clear all if you need to. You can create a safe search based on these parameters, for example. We can put finalize with pending recs, click confirm. Clear these filters, so we have the full list, but all I need to do is click once, click twice, and I again have that refined view with two clicks. You can sort a variety of different parameters here, last name, first name, date of JDLLB, date of LLM, when the account was created. This allows you to sort by ascending and descending order by clicking this. You also have the batch options. You can send them an email. If you have a shared search or safe search you want to share with them, for example, here, you can share those with your applicants. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. You also have the login as feature, which has not changed. Let's click on this applicant here. You get an idea of the applicant overview section. This is pretty much unchanged. Account their documents, pending recommendations, their recommenders. And here are their applications. So you see a list of all of their applications, both staff attorney and clerkship positions. Applications are all together now. You can filter if you want to. See there the position status, filter by that. Here's the information for the applicant you're viewing, including clickable email address if you need to contact them. You can see a drop down here with all of their documents. You can even add a document from here if you want to. Clicking View All will take you to their Documents list page. And then see their recommenders at a glance as well. So that allows you to open and close that easily for easy viewing. Here are all their positions. So let's click on one of these applications here and you get a status of the completion of the application. The name of the judge, the type of clerkship, the open date of the position, the listing of their documents, whether or not they have any recommendations, and this shows you a percentage. So 33% because the documents are not complete, no recommendations are complete right now, so it's at 33%. Okay. Let's go to your recommenders. Here we have the recommenders list. You have your faculty recommenders clearly notated and your outside recommenders notated here with a tag, different colors. You can also filter, yes or no. If you want to see faculty only, you can click yes. And then there's all of your faculty recommenders. Or you can click no and see only your outside recommenders here. You can also see if they have pending recommendations or not. Here you see the pending recommendations. You're able to log in and you're able to view. 
You can also add a new recommender if you would like. View, just get an information, list of their information, their settings, change this if you need to. View the applicant recommendation requests. And again, as I said, you can log in as. You want to complete these requests that way. You can also do batch options, such as manage your emails. You want to email them, set their frequencies. If you want to batch and turn them off. So let them know. If they want to be reminded that they have pending requests, you can turn this on and off here quickly. You can set them as a faculty or remove as faculty if you are a faculty. Save the list. Retain the recommenders during our archiving period. And then manage the evites. You can turn off the evites or turn them back on. Evites work a little bit differently than they used to in the past. These are actually what we would call a recommender reply email that gets sent to the recommender with a secure link that they can use to click one time, automatically be authenticated into the system, and then fill the request that way. But you can, again, especially for faculty, you can turn these off um, via this setting here. So we have the judicial directory. Again, that's default. Uh, filters there that were applied. So the judicial director will list all federal judges in the United States and all staff attorney offices, whether they have a position posted or not, whether they participate in Oscar or not, they will all be listed here. Currently this is default to filter by city state, but you can filter by last name. And see all judges. They do participate in Oscar, you'll see their application methods. You can filter this by the type of clerkships that they have open, how they take applications, and the type of judge. More importantly, here are the more important filters. If you need to, you can see who is not currently hiring or who is not participating in Oscar. And you can also save the defaults here. So you can set up some criteria. And the filter, the list will always be filtered by that criteria each time you log into Oscar and come to this list. So here, for example, here's your list sorted by alphabetical order of judges that are not participating in Oscar. Going to clear that. These are judges that are not currently hiring. Let me set that as. That is correct. And again, you can clear all of that data there. What you can also do, as I mentioned earlier, is if you have a set of search criteria, let's say, for example, Boston, and you want to see judges that are currently hiring, and then you have a student that is interested in judges from Boston, Currently, don't have any positions available right now, but if you want to, you can save a search. And then when you need to later, you can go back to your applicant's list and share the search with the applicant, the student that you want to share that with. Staff attorney offices are also available. And you will be able to see if a judge had a position posted at one point. For example, this judge has an expired position. You can click through, see the judge's details, and also see the details of the clerkship that has expired and if they have archived positions as well. You can click those and actually view the details of any past positions that have been posted to help with the research. 
for that judge. Tools, manage your emails, class rank certification, your law school profile, and reports. We have a set of package reports that are available. These can be run. See the last run, regenerate to get a new run, or also review previous runs. There's your accounts. So this is your account information. It's also where you would update your notification preferences. You can also do it here, as we saw earlier. This lists your school admin accounts and your archive school admins. School admin accounts. You can create a new school admin. All these different preferences here. Also on their account, you can assign user rights. You have three types of user rights. You can click this little question mark. It'll give you a full explanation of what each user right does and how it can be used. For example, you can make them an administrator, save and exit. And then we have our training page. So here's our new training resources page, which provides information for all of our non-judiciary users, such as quick reference guides, help articles in our customer portal. You could go here. Gives you lots of information to help you get started using the system, then more detailed information, such as applying for positions, dealing with your recommendations, using email and Oscar as a law school administrator. All of that information will be here, easily searchable. Other articles are recommended, and you can also rate articles to help us provide better content. Videos such as this one here will be posted in this video section. If we have any upcoming training events, webinars, or etc., this will be here. And then the resource pages, such as the applicant prep kit, will be available here, also for law school administrators and for recommenders. Okay. And I believe that's it. That's, that's our overview of the law school administrator interface in Oscar. Thank you for watching.